Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Heads Up Hockey Podcast. I am your host, Joseph Stanislaw, better known as Jersey Joe. Um, yeah, yesterday was the trade deadline, and the Devils obviously traded Dmitry Kulikov to the Edmonton Oilers for a 2022 conditional fourth-round pick. And how that one works is that if Edmonton wins their uh, play-in round, not play-in round, but their first uh, playoff series in the playoffs of 2021, the Devils will get that fourth-round pick shifted up to a third in the 2022 draft. So there's something about that that the Devils have got going in that one. Um, I was expecting in a normal year to possibly have gotten maybe a third round pick in 2021 if it weren't for, you know, what's going on in this world. Um, crazy things, crazy times. Anywho, um, Sammy Vatnin went on waivers to uh, the Dallas Stars. Um, my take on this is that it seems like Devils GM Tom Fitzgerald did his best to move him and, and uh, Ryan Murray. And it seems that he decided to keep Ryan Murray for the stability of the prospects uh, in the AHL, better known as Binghamton Devils, or I call him uh, Bing Binghamton uh, Newark because they're spending time in Newark at the Devils practice rink. But anyways, um, the Devils use one of their extra mid-round picks um, to get um, a player from Washington being being Jonas Siegenthaler, who happens to be Nico Heischer's uh, old teammate from the Swiss national team in 2017. He apparently is a physical six foot two uh, defensive defenseman. Listen to him in an interview today. Um, the Devils did an interview live on their rate on their video stream, and he talked about. He can skate, but pretty basically, um, nothing too flashy, but he's just, you know, he plays his defensive structure, and sometimes he likes to lay out the hits. Um, when you get rid of Kulikov and you bring in someone younger, it's good to have that. Um, do I think Will Butcher gets more playing time? Possibly. Um, however, if I check tonight's lineups, and I'm just checking what the Devils have put out, and right now, the first pairing for the defense is, I like this one a lot. It's Ty Smith and uh, Damon Severson. You have a two-way player in Ty Smith who can do just about everything. But Severson is meant to be the offensive defenseman on that pairing. Um, you have Will Butcher and P.K. Subban. On that line, Butcher, Butcher's not the most fleet of foot, but he will do what he can to shoot the puck in, and he's pretty good on the power play, although he hasn't gotten much playing time. I do see him getting a little bit more ice time and maybe shooting the puck more, kind of like in past games that he's played in in this season. Um, I would like to see him work more under Mark Recchi in that category because Recky likes to work with a lot of young guys and Butcher is a big shooter. Subban, he's been passing the puck a lot more than he normally does. I want to see Subban, you know, obviously shoot the puck more, but it depends on how they are setting the offensive structure down low. Um, you have Ryan Murray, who I just mentioned not long ago who is playing tonight, he will be there to bolster that third that third pairing line. And the Devils don't dress a seventh defenseman. So that's just Lindy Ruff in a nutshell. You have Ryan Murray is going to be the two-way player who gets to skate the puck up ice. Uh, Jonas, or Jonas, they he said... I keep on saying Jonas because of the Finnish players, but he's Swiss uh, Thai. So there's that. Um, he is obviously going to anchor that third line. And if the Devils can get that third line working and improve the second line, 
of the defense, I'd be pretty happy about that. But um, I think in the offseason, the Devils might be looking to move Will Butcher because you might be seeing Nikita Ohotjuk or Kevin Ball within the next season coming right up. So you have him and uh, you have Michael Vukojevic, uh, the young uh, Croatian-Canadian uh, left-handed defenseman from the Kitchener Rangers, no affiliate with the New York Rangers. I'm talking about the OHL team that Scott Stevens used to play for. You have uh, that chemistry. Vukojevic can be physical, but he also can chip in offensively. But Vukojevic, I don't see coming right away. I see that more towards the end of the season or early as this upcoming season. So let's just be perfectly clear. <clears throat> the Devils have their top line being Yanni Kuokinen, Jack Hughes, Igor Sharangovich. Um, what do I think about Yanni Kuokinen? The Finnish left wing, he's very versatile. He has speed. He plays the puck very well. He doesn't quit. I like watching players that don't quit on the puck, on the play, and they get it back and try and feed Jack Hughes. And Jack Hughes has been more of a playmaker this year. He's been improving his points per game versus last year. He's added more muscle. He's lost some of it because of, you know, the, this thing that we're going on with, um, so to speak. I can't really mess mess around with YouTube because I could be demonetized. Um, Igor Sharangovich, however, is just the Belarusian uh, sniper. He also has a power forward game. He really absolutely brings the best out of Jack Hughes and Yanni Kuokinen. And it just seems like whatever line he's on, he just loves to shoot the puck at will. Whether it's a snapshot or a slap shot or even a wrist shot. Um, Miles Wood on the second line, along with Nico Heischer coming back, the captain's back. This is great because Nico is a two-way player. I like seeing these two-way players. He does a lot of takeaways, so, so has Jack. But we're talking about Nico's line. This is great to have because Jesper Brad's more of a shooter now. He can skate the puck up ice. He's got really good eyes. He understands the game. He plays a game within the game. And Miles Wood is the Bam Bam type player. Big physical body, power forward, lots of speed, lots of grit, doesn't quit. I like those types of players. Um, what do I think about Andreas Janssen, Jesper Bokvist, and Marian Studenich? Uh, the Slovak uh, right wing and Marian Studenich, he's from Holich, Slovakia. I visited his home country, very beautiful place. I believe he has a lot of the capabilities from passing to skating to getting open and making the right plays uh, on the third line. He seems to understand how Jesper Bokvist moves pretty swiftly. They can cycle the puck. They can create a lot of opportunities if they shoot a little bit more. And I've seen Jesper and uh, Andreas Janssen. They're both Swedish players. They can both play center. They can both play wing. Janssen's been snake bitten, hitting posts, and sometimes trying to get that backhand forehand to backhand type drive to the net. He's been robbed. But I believe the way they play together, even under a full season for next year, I can see a lot of benefits happening. And the Devils seem to have a goaltender they're playing against in Igor Shesterkin. So the Devils have a good chance to maybe put on some points. And I would like to see uh, Mikhail Maltsev, his line with Michael McLeod and Tice Thompson. Yeah, Tice uh, is a shooter, but he can also protect the puck very well. So does... Mikhail Maltsev, he just needs to fix his passing game a little bit more. And his power forward game is very good. And he just drives that fourth line pretty well. Michael McLeod, you know, he's a center with lots of speed, energy. 
He's starting to click more under the Lindy Ruff style of hockey. I think it's a great thing that the Devils have this kind of synergy. It's pretty good. Um, this is going to be a very battle-testing game because Alexi Lafreniere is playing on the first line for the Rangers, along with Philip Heedle and Kapo Kako. So you look at that, Heedle's more of the high danger scoring guy. Lafreniere is more all around winger who ended up playing for Oceanic uh, Ramuski. So you look at that, if you can have Quokinen shut down Lafreniere, you can have Jack Hughes cover Philip Heedle and Yegor Sharangovich can cover Kako. You can cancel out the big gritty guy um, on that line, so on and so forth. It still surprises me to see former double Kevin Rooney on the second line with Brett Howden and Vitaly Kravtsov. Kravtsov is a wild card. I don't think too much about Kevin Rooney, but he seems to have found his niche um, on a non-John Hines team. But he seems to play better under Coach Quinn for the Rangers. So I guess it's a uh, chemistry thing. But you have, yeah, so far, they the Rangers have only listed their top two lines for their forward group. Then they just have Ryan Lindgren uh, to anchor with Adam Fox. Adam Fox is a former teammate of Devils defenseman Riley Walsh from Harvard. And Fox seems to be their next Brian Leach. Let's see if that really works. In the long run, sometimes players get really good one season. That Like, Will Butcher got really good one season, but Fox could fall off a cliff uh, points-wise. And, you know, there would all be all this excess media saying, what happened to this kid? So that's just my take on him, but he still has some good upside. Uh, Keandre Miller, actually, long story short, few seasons ago, Devils, uh, this was before they uh, drafted Ty Smith. I put in my uh, mock draft that I would have Keandre Miller to the New Jersey Devils at that spot. And I had Ty Smith going to the Flyers because I know the Flyers were taking defenseman after defenseman, draft after draft. And so I was looking at the historical trends. But I didn't think it was out of the blue that the Devils would pick a kid like Ty Smith. And now the Devils have a player like Ty Smith who can absolutely do uh, a lot of great things with the puck offensively and defensively. And so uh, Jack, not Jack, but Ty has really uh, dominated the WHL. And he's marinated the past two seasons. It's really paid off. And I can see that working with the other Devils prospects um, who are defensemen because Tom Fitzgerald is not going to rush a guy if he doesn't believe that they're not ready. Um, Keandre Miller is a big boy. He can, he played college hockey, but he was also a USHL, USNTDP guy, big boy. He can obviously use his long reach. And he can absolutely destroy a play. This is kind of where the Devils got the idea of getting Shakir Muhammadulin in the last draft at 20th overall. So I think what the Devils see in another guy, but with Muhammadulin's shot, they think he could be char esque with the reach and the slapper. So that's what I think the Devils saw in Keandre Miller seasons later in Muhammadulin. Um, Jacob Trauba, or some people call him Truba, he's a uh, offensive defenseman, and it seems to be that you know Miller will complement him on the defensive side. Trauba will be the offensive guy to shoot pucks on net. Libor Hayek and Brendan Smith seem to be their third pairing guys. Shesterkin, um, I don't think of him a whole lot as a number one goaltender. I believe. Alexander Georgiev is the better of the two. 
I find Georgiev, when he's locked in, it's hard to beat him. When a guy is that zoned in, it's hard to beat a guy like that. Whether he's seeing the puck or he just predicts where the puck will be and they have that sixth sense. So for to take what that is worth, the Dulls have, it appears to be right now, Aaron Dell scratched, Nicholas Merkley's scratched, Nathan Bastion has a lower body injury, Pavel Zaka is undisclosed, so we don't know. But um, Julian Gauthier for the Rangers, along with Philip D. Giuseppe, is out. So, um, other than that, I believe to see that there could be some last-minute changes, especially a couple hours before the game. You never know what happens, especially nowadays. But I like what's going on. Okay, I forgot to mention... The Criders of Manajad pa Pavel Buchnevich lines are the first line for the Rangers. So Criders just been a devil's killer this past se this current season. Zabanajad not as much. He's become close with a few posts. Buchnevich he just seems to find the net. But Panarin's officially back from Russia playing the Devils after taking that leave of absence, which was a fabricated story against Panarin and friend of the podcast Molly Walker covered it on TV and Brian Strom seems to be the center that can absolutely do a lot of good things with Panarin and uh, Colin Blackwell so that was my mistake earlier because I wasn't wearing my glasses I should have worn my glasses because they put the projected lineup a little further, but anyways, it says status report. Kreider and Panarin each is expected to play after not practicing Monday. Nico Heischer will return after missing 24 games with a sinus fracture. Siegenthaler will make his Devils debut after being acquired in a trade with the Capitals on Sunday. Bastion practiced a second straight day Tuesday, but the forward will miss his 14th straight game. And this is unusual for Bastion because he's usually playing with McLeod and they're usually with Wood, uh, creating a lot of speed and havoc. And it says here Zaka was scheduled to meet with doctors Tuesday to determine the extent of an injury sustained in the second period of a 5-2 loss to the Pittsburgh Penguins on Sunday. So there's that um, for today's game, but I want to touch more up on the NHL trade deadline for the Devils. Uh, the Kyle Paul Mary and Travis Zajac uh, trade was basically written on the wall. For me, I didn't think Zajac was going to move his no trade clause, no move clause, whatever it was, he waved off. I just think that when the Devils acquired Alexander Holtz and Dawson Mercer as those two forwards in the 2021, I mean the 2020 draft rather, the writing was on the wall for both players. It was just a matter of time. Um, they were both going to be free agents anyway. One or two of them could come back to the Devils, but I don't think that's um, in the in the possibility of that realm that Tom Fitzgerald wants to do that. But honestly, I think the time is now. The youth, like my buddy Jim Berger said, the youth movement is now, and it is time that these kids fight out for spots full-time and speaking of full-time uh heads up hockey now has a sponsor uh, for those of you who live in the u.s minus uh vegas there's this fantasy sports app it's called vigit v-i-g-i-t it's sports fantasy wagers it's a lot of fun you can create your own fantasy league 
and you know win fantasy currency and of course when you have a lot of the fantasy currency add up to uh claiming in for prizes like amazon gift cards it's very cool um you want to use huh 2021 as in 2021 huh 2021 it basically stands for heads up hockey 2021 so for those of you who are gonna want to have me give a letter grade for this uh devil's trade deadline in this in this type of market and what the volatility has gone around the league with money problems and stuff like that i have to give the devils a b plus because they did their very best to field for gusev they had put him on waivers for the sake of a buyout and you know florida claimed him so there is no one to trade him for. So that's that. Vatnin, like I said earlier, you know, you try to get him traded to someone else, but no one bit the bullet for it. So, I mean, bit the bait rather. But however, the Devils did get to move a couple pieces that otherwise would have gone elsewhere. It seemed to be a mutual thing. But getting a guy like Jonas Siegenthaler on the team to add some physical size and someone who's a little bit older and someone who's been on a uh, a playoff team the past few seasons is really good. And this player also knows Nico, so it's, it's a really good thing to have. But other than that, thanks for uh, following in. I'll leave in the description for the promo code to uh, the sponsor. And don't forget, I'm part of uh, the Puck Authority. And I cover not just the doubles, I cover prospects. But maybe in another video, you can like and subscribe. Hit that like button. It helps us uh, beat the YouTube algorithm. And... Thank you so much. Have a great day.